I managed to be amongst the first people to earn the MGS1 Platinum in the Master Collection. I did not get the game early, and I got 99% of the trophies done day one. If I knew some of the things that I'm going to share with you in this video, I would have easily been top 5, not to mention I would have saved myself a ton of time and a couple of headaches along the way. Let's get into it. The first tip is more of a PSA rather than an actual tip, but trust me, it's worth knowing as this is the reason I didn't get the Platinum quicker. Currently, the Practice Makes Perfect or VR Mission Completion trophy is bugged. Completing every VR mission to 100% completion on the actual VR mission disc, which is the North American version, will not grant you the trophy or achievement. I found this out the hard way after completing every single VR mission and not getting the trophy. The only workaround currently until Konami patches it, if they decide to patch it that is, is to play the special missions disc over the VR missions disc. If you've already played through VR missions, unfortunately, you'll have to progress to 100% on special missions all over again like I did. For those who are still working on completing their MGS1 Platinums and haven't started the VR grind, make sure you attempt this trophy on special missions. It will save you a lot of time and heartbreak. Trust me, this is something I really wish I knew was bugged from the get-go, but at least I was able to test it out for you all and report my findings to help you avoid this annoying bug. The actual missions themselves are pretty much identical between VR missions and special missions, with the biggest difference being special missions running a bit slower than the VR missions since PAL region discs from this time ran slower than their NTSC version counterparts. It shouldn't take you long to adjust to the difference though. Either way, good luck with your VR missions grind. Next up, we have a tip I was thinking about trying out but didn't end up testing during my initial trophy run of MGS1. However, there have been reports that this does indeed work. The trick is to play the original Japanese release of Metal Gear Solid to make the Elite Trophy way easier. The reason it's so easy on the Japanese version is because when Metal Gear Solid first released in Japan, there was no difficulty menu added for players to choose the difficulty. The one difficulty you play on is the equivalent of easy on every other version of the game, meaning guards don't see you or hear you from as far away, bosses require less damage done to them to take them down, ammo and rations are much more plentiful, and you get a ton of HP back after defeating bosses. Despite this, you can still earn a rating of Fox or even Big Boss at the end of the game by following the normal restrictions. Things such as less than 4 alerts, less than 25 kills, beating the game in under 3 hours, etc. Essentially meaning you can earn these titles by playing on easy. Fox is earned by just starting the game like you normally would and playing with the radar on. If you want a little more of a challenge and to earn the Big Boss rating instead, you need to go into the options menu and turn the radar off. Keep in mind that while this method of cheesing the Elite Trophy makes the game much easier, I wouldn't really recommend it to someone that is brand new to MGS1 or someone that hasn't played it in a while and doesn't remember how to progress the game without help. The reason being, all of the cutscenes, codec calls, and weapon and item descriptions are all in Japanese. If you don't know what to do next and you do not speak Japanese, you might end up lost and wasting a lot of time while you figure out what to do next. Try this method out if you feel you're familiar enough with the game to not need help progressing, or if you don't feel super confident in playing on hard or extreme difficulty on the other discs. Also, one last thing just to clarify, when I say the Japanese version of the game, I do not mean integral. You need to download the Japanese language pack for the original disc and play it that way. If you press new game and you see difficulty choices, you're playing the wrong game. Do you want the ghost photography trophy during your playthrough while not having to go super out of your way? Here's how I incorporated picking up the camera and taking a picture of a ghost into my normal route. At the beginning of the game, when you pick up some C4 to get into the first ocelot fight, use the fourth C4 you get to blow open this wall next to the ocelot boss room. Don't go into it yet though, we're going to come back a bit later on when we need to pick up our PSG-1 for the sniper wolf fight. Once you've reached that point in the game, pick up your PSG-1, throw a stun grenade in the PSG-1 room, and wait for it to go off. Then make your way south to the door that leads into the Ocelot boss room that we can now access. Go south into the original entrance to the boss room, and then right into the wall we blew up at the beginning of the game. I suggest throwing a chaff here so you don't take any unnecessary damage from the gun cameras. Go into this room and pick up the camera before making your way back into the Ocelot boss room. Once you're there, line up with this line on the ground and take a picture at the pillar directly in front of you. Save your picture and whenever you're back at the main menu, go to your album and exercise the ghost for the trophy. Once you have your picture, you can continue your mission by exiting the boss room via the northern door we came in from and making your way to the far right side of the armory, throwing this guard and then proceeding to the elevator to make your way back to Merrill and Sniper Wolf. I did a bit of research by going through every single ghost photo location before the Master Collection dropped and figured this was probably the easiest way to get your ghost picture out of the way. Let me know what you think. 
Here's another trick I use to cut down the amount of playthroughs you need to go through in order to get the Platinum. By saving right after the first Sniper Wolf fight, you are saving before the torture sequence. Meaning, once you complete your first playthrough of the game all the way through, in order to get your bandana or stealth camouflage, you can then reload here and continue from this point instead of having to start a new game entirely. So for example, in my day one Platinum run of MGS1, say that five times fast, I chose to go for the bandana first and put myself through the torture sequence while I still had energy. I I beat the game whilst sticking to the parameters to get Fox rating and the bandana. I then reloaded the save file after my sniper wolf fight and gave into the torture in order to get the stealth camo ending. This makes your second playthrough shorter and easier over having to start a completely new run of the game, especially if you got your elite title out of the way your first run like I did. You can essentially just mow everything down and use as many rations as you want your second playthrough. I didn't really see a lot of people doing this, and instead, most people opted for going for the stealth camo first, and then their elite title the second playthrough, but I don't really see the point in that. Personally, I think having to play a playthrough and a half is better than playing two entire playthroughs, even if it's with stealth camo or the bandana. I'll leave the decision up to you guys, but I just thought I'd mention the methods I use to get both special items quickly. By the way, you can use both special items during a playthrough and still get the top ranks. Take advantage of this if you do not think you can get through the game without some extra assistance. This is pretty much the only game in the entire series that allows the use of special items when going for the top ranks. A question I received a lot during my Platinum livestream is at which point in the game players should be saving. While it depends on a player to player basis, the fact that you are allowed 80 saves maximum in order to get Fox or Big Boss rank means you can save pretty liberally. What I recommend most players do is save at the beginning of every boss fight. You'll lose a couple of seconds doing this, but it's the much better option over dying to a boss and having to restart somewhere minutes before, or even worse, at the last boss encounter. My personal first save is usually right as you enter the first wall you blow up in order to get to Ocelot. This is because I know that if you save during the Ocelot encounter, it takes you back to this room anyway. I also like to save here because sometimes I use risky strategies against Ocelot and I really do not not want to restart the entire game if I mess them up. That would mean having to do the dock, heliport, and tank hanger sections all over again, which can get annoying. Other than at bosses, I like to save at the B2 armory right as the elevator opens up in case I mess this section up. It's very easy to mess this section up, and there's a lot to do here since this is also where you need to pick up the camera and take a ghost picture on top of getting the PSG-1 all while undetected. Another crucial point is after the sniper wolf fight for the reason mentioned earlier. If you want to cut your playthrough to one and a half, saving here and keeping that save file active is crucial. It's also just a good idea to save here in case you mess up and die at the torture sequence. Some other good points to save are before the tower ascension, during the rope descent, since you get your full health bar back here, and right as you start disc 2. Again, do not be afraid to save often, just make sure you're not overriding a crucial save file. As for when to use the one ration you're allowed to use in your entire playthrough, I like to use it during the hind D fight or the stealth guard rush right after it. I would try and avoid using it any time before that as you get your entire HP bar back at quite a few points. The first being the torture sequence, the second being the rope descent, and lastly, before each liquid encounter. Also keep in mind, if you're playing on hard difficulty or on the Japanese version of the game, you should be getting a substantial amount of health back after fighting bosses. The only other tip I can give you guys is to please make sure you're having fun and please make sure you're pacing yourself. The grind started to get to me after having to complete 600 plus VR missions since the trophy was bugged for me. But thanks to everyone in my chat, I was able to pull through, finish those 300 missions again, and get the platinum. So thank you so much to everyone who made it out to the live streams. If you want to be there for the live streams, make sure you subscribe and also hit the notification bell as that is the best way to keep up with upcoming live streams. As always, thank you so much for watching. Many more guides are on the way, and I will see you guys in the next one.